Hey there, Alan here from RVAcrossAmerica.net, and uh, it's October 20th. I am now set up for the winter in Victor, Idaho. Uh, this is earlier than I've ever set up for the winter before, but I saw the weather that was coming, and I decided to get here ahead of it. Let me turn the camera to my outside window, give it a moment to adjust, and I think you can see the fresh snow that's on the leaves, the trees, and the fence outside, and of course all the roofs of the houses. <clears throat> I was in Lava Hot Springs, and I did actually originally do this same uh, talk with you uh, outside of my camper in Lava Hot Springs, right next to a river. Uh, beautiful sight, beautiful day, it was nearly 70 degrees, but and I was in t-shirt. Uh, this is just two days ago. Um, but it, the wind was too much and it was just driving the camera crazy. So here I am inside my camper. It's about 25 degrees outside. As you can see, there's a sugar coating of fresh snow, not enough to ski on, not enough to cross country ski on, just enough to ice up the roads a little bit. So I'm not going anywhere for a little while this morning. So, uh, this talk is going to be at rvacrossamerica.net forward slash RV life. And this is probably a fairly important talk. Um, you could subtitle this, um, Don't Let Anyone Steal Your RV Dream, because I'm going to talk about RV life and RV lifestyle. One of my readers, viewers, I, he reads my posts, he watches my videos, um, reached out to me, and uh, he was expressing concern about going into the RV life uh, based on a video he had seen made by a younger couple, people in their 30s, and they had several complaints. They were really bad-mouthing the RV lifestyle. Um, and, you know, the first thing that hit my heart was they're trying to steal his dream. Um, so I decided I would watch the video. I listened to their complaints. And I, honestly, I got to wonder whether they really did much RV travel at all. Um, but here's, here's the, their complaints. And I want to kind of hit them one at a time. And, you know, this is not just giving credence to what they had to say, but there are other people that probably say similar things. I want to address these points. Um, they had three key areas that they, uh, that they spoke about, and um, possibly a fourth, if I recall. And if, if the fourth wasn't from them, it's from somebody else. The cost of RV campground stays. They complained about how expensive it is. They complained about how crowded the RV campgrounds are. Uh, they complained about lack of internet access because they're trying to do business while they're on the road. And they complained about the cost or, or the frequency of ongoing repairs. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if that was them, but it, was, it could have been somebody else. And a lot of people run into that. So here's my bottom line message again. Don't let anyone steal your dream. Really, don't let anyone steal your dream. Um, and here's my take based upon... Uh, nearly eight years of travel and really for the last seven months continuous travel you know I've spent in these eight years my routine has been uh, spend the summer either campground hosting or then for four summers in RV sales in Casper Wyoming that store no longer exists which is why I started the concierge RV buying and selling service um, and again that's all over at rvacrossamerica.net forward slash RV life. Um, and it's really in the last seven months that I, I've been continuously traveling because my winters have been spent staying near great ski areas. This winter, for the second winter, I'm going to be working as a ski instructor at Jackson Hole Mountain Resort, and I'm staying in Victor just over the pass from, uh, from Jackson. I uh, kind of wish they'd build a tunnel there because it's about a 2,500-foot climb uh, to get to the top of the thing uh, between the two towns, which are not that far apart. So, um, anyway, enough dreaming. I can dream, can't I? Um, let's talk about these item by item. And again, on my post, you're going to find an extensive list of advice and details. There's a lot of good stuff there. I was writing it up yesterday, and I'm thinking, wow, this is turning out to be one of my better posts. So, again, it's at rvacrossamerica.net forward slash RV life. Oh, um, and the video that you saw at the beginning of this, that's where I was. That's the campsite I was at that I tried making the video for. But, again, it was just too windy. 
So um, cost of stay, you know, in the last seven months, my average stay has been about $15. And I give several very specific tips in the written report. I don't want this video to go on forever. I give several very specific tips as to how you can keep your cost down. You know, if your idea of RV camping is pulling off the highway and getting into a KOA or a Good Sam or something like that, yeah, you're going to pay a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, you're going to pay, you know, 35, 40, 45 or more dollars per night. Um, I'll tell you this, I can stay 10 miles outside of West Yellowstone for about $15 a night. And there are a lot of places like that. And it's those same places where you avoid the crowds. Now, one of their arguments in their video was that if they did try to get away from the crowds and away from the commercial private campgrounds, uh, which tend to pack you in tighter to begin with, you know, I'm a big fan of state parks, national parks, uh, national forest service areas. And again, I get into all those details on a written post. Um, their argument is that you lose your internet access. Well, I don't find that to be the case. I live on uh, a smartphone that is a Verizon smartphone, uh, Note 9, great phone, Droid, love Droid. Sorry, Apple people. But um, I, I've learned, and you can do the same thing with an Apple, I've learned to use the phone as a hotspot and then turn it into essentially a Wi-Fi hotspot so my laptop can um, be on the Internet. I do the same thing with an AT&T device, and again, I detail all that in a written report. I, I don't want to make this video go on forever. Um, I found this summer, and I found some pretty remote places to be. I mean, I was in the San Rafael Swell. I had internet access. I was driving through the Uinta Mountains. I had internet access. Uh, how do I have internet? Again, if I have cell phone access, I have internet access. And if you need me to help you show you how to turn your cell phone into an internet hotspot, I will. Um, but with the combination of Verizon and AT&T cell service, I was covered 98, 99, 99.5% of the time. I can think of four nights where I wasn't fully covered. And for me, that's important. And I'm sure for this young couple, it's important because we're doing business on the road. You know, my RV, uh, my concierge RV buying and selling service, I just helped a fella who is doing some missionary work with native uh, populations up in Quebec, uh, lives in Georgia, and uh, was selling his motorhome in Georgia. Um, I helped him sell it. And neither of us were anywhere near the motorhome. <laughs> uh, I'm in the process of finalizing a purchase for him where the campers in Tennessee and uh, we're going to get it inspected in Tennessee and then sent down, transported over to Georgia. So when he gets back home in December, it'll be there waiting for him. I had a, a, a young lady over in Astoria, Oregon, uh, selling her um, Arctic Fox fifth wheel. Same thing. I've got a young woman in uh, Maine who I'm speaking with about selling her truck and trailer. You know, I can't do those things if I don't have Internet access. And I won't have Internet access if I don't have a cell phone. But between Verizon and AT&T, they got it covered. They really do. Uh, you got to get pretty remote. I can think, again, four nights uh, where I was out of Internet access. And even then, I had a little bit of a signal. And I was only a mile away, drive up the hill a little bit. And I was perfectly set. So if I needed to take out a half an hour now and then and go up the hill and do a few things, um, on the internet through the laptop, I could. So I, I don't understand their complaint about lack of internet access. Now, the fourth one, ongoing repairs. Let me just touch that briefly. If you buy right the first time and you buy a product which is well-made, you're not going to spend the rest of your life in the repair shop. The odds are in your favor. Now, I know that everybody can come up with an exception. Somebody's going to say to me, well, I had a blah, 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 which is poorly made, and I've had no problems. Okay. It happens. That's anecdotal. And other people could say, I went and I bought that creme de la creme, and it's been nothing but a crumb bun. Well, that happens too. But what can I say? You play the odds. If you buy right and you buy a good quality product, you're not going to be spending the rest of your life in the service center. This summer, I put 700 bucks into my truck because it needed routine maintenance. And I put $250 or $200 into the camper because it needed wheel bearings uh, to be uh, 
done, a bearing job. That's it. So, um, it is what it is. Alan here, rvacrossamerica.net forward slash RV life. If you like this, if you find this stuff good, go over to my site, join my newsletter, um, give me a thumbs up over on YouTube, uh, subscribe to my channel. Hey, I'm here. I've got more stuff coming. And let me hear from you. I want to hear your stories. All right? You all take care and have a great day. RVacrossamerica.net forward slash RV life. Be good.